Good morning, everyone. <laughs> you stopped playing and I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> it's good to see you here this morning. Uh, with the sun shining so far this morning, we're, we're lucky. It's going to be a nice warm day. And what better day to come out and worship God than to be here with uh, each other. We thank you for uh, your presence with us as we uh, come together as the fellowship of Jesus, as the body of Christ, and to uh, be a part of not only worship here, but preparing us as we go out into the world to uh, connect with those around us who also, in many ways, are the body of Christ. Some may just not know that they are part of the body of Christ. And that's where you come in is to invite them to be a part. We have an announcement this morning from the youth that they need you to hear. <laughs> next, week is, next week is the last week to turn in the order forms and money for our Jerome's Meat Market fundraiser. Um, if you need an, an order form, they're going to be on the table back in the narthex. And then if you have any questions, you can ask any one of the youth. All checks can be payable to Dundee United Methodist Church Youth. And the meat will be delivered to the church and ready for pickup Sunday, May 5th. Um, we do thank you for all your continued support and we appreciate all of you.
please join me in the call to worship. How shall we live when lavished with love? Just as in our origins, our future is tied to our planet. Creator has given us partners for mutual flourishing. Let us worship God who makes all things new. You may be seated. Lord of light and mercy, be with us this day as we again hear the stories of faith and sight. Help us to believe in your abiding presence with us, both in our darkness and in the light which you bring. Give us courage and strength to witness your resurrection. For we offer this in Jesus' name. Amen. As God leads us beside the still waters of grace, Christ invites us to offer these still waters of grace and peace to one another, that all may know the peace of God. Please take a moment. Share God's peace with each other. Our first reading today comes from Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart. More than when your grain and wine abound, I will both lie down and sleep in peace for you alone. O Lord, make me lie down in safety.
may be seated. Today our epistle reading comes out of 1 John again, and it's in chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is who we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not been yet revealed. But we do know th is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he truly is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commit or commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is the word of God for the people of God. Even as the risen Christ appears to those first disciples, so Christ is present with us now. So let us be in an attitude of prayer as we open our minds and ready our hearts to hear and receive the word of God. Risen Christ, come to us now. Open our ears that we may hear your word. Open our minds that we may understand the scriptures before us. Speak to our hearts that our lives may be transformed by your love and guide our steps as we go forth that we may be your beloved children, witnessing to your resurrection and proclaiming your message throughout the earth. Amen. Well, our title of our message today is We Purify in Hope. Now, doesn't that sound like a, a really gripping type of title? must be. <laughs> you got really quiet there. I, I didn't wake you <laughs> because of the title, did I? But we, we walk and we know that that's okay. We abide and that's certainly good. But we purify? What might that look like in our context today and every day? Maybe it's our community has been wrestling with these issues that over the years, because we've heard from time to time about this purifying culture that is out there, which sounds great on the surface, but it tends to elevate certain behaviors or maybe the absences of certain behaviors as more normative to the Christian faith than others are. Much of what the purity culture speaks about are the sexual sins, but not so much about a host of other priorities to which Jesus was drawing attention to. Maybe you've become aware of the emphasis on the shame, but not about the redemption and the grace that Jesus gives to us. Maybe purity in your context seems an unattainable ideal that only serves to frustrate those who are seeking to become disciples and follow Jesus but find it simply too onerous and therefore are more likely to give up before really beginning their journey. Yet on the other hand, maybe the idea of purity works for you. Maybe you understand the need to approach behavior and a right to actions along with orthodoxy or the right belief. That is the point though, that John is making in this text today. Notice how hope sits alongside this action of purification. It's hope, claims John, or maybe the Joanine community that wrote these things, that leads to a desire for purity. And who is our model? We have a model in Jesus. 
who is as pure as possible can get. We purify ourselves as he is pure, in verse 3 it says. And with Christ it is fulfilled as he is pure. For us it is a process as we purify ourselves. We are in the process of becoming like Christ. This doesn't mean that there are no destinations or no strivings or but it does mean that we have as much grace with ourselves as Christ has with us. And how much grace might that be? Well, our text begins with these words. See what love. Think about that. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called the children of God. See what love. Can you hear the sense of amazement in that statement? Do you hear the joy that is inherent in this mind-blowing concept? For that is what we are, John writes, the children, the very children of God. This is the hope by which we are living, the hope not as an empty or vain wish to what we hope for, but we are living in a new reality that has redefined our existence. And we entered this Easter season with the grateful joy, with the celebration of new experiences of life, and a promise that drives us to follow that path that Jesus has for us. And yet, as we keep reading today in our scripture, it seems like the joy is a little bit short-lived. In verses 5, it says we are given an impossible standard. In him, there is no sin. And in verse 6, no one abides in him will sin. You know, this is where we find ourselves in a little bit of trouble. You know, we know that we are in sin. There's no place for us, we think, since no one who abides in him will sin, and we know that we do sin. It makes it painful for us. You know, prior to Easter, we came through that season of Lent and the self-examination that brought our sinfulness and our mortality into our awareness yet once again. We often like to pretend to be sinless, but are we really? If we go back a couple of chapters, back to last week's text, we read this. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So as we read in chapter 1, we admit our sinfulness, but in chapter 3, we are called to be sinless and to abide in Jesus. And how can we this be? How can we become sinless? Well, maybe if we uh, ha translated it just a little bit in different text or context here, verses 5 and 6, we would hear, you know that he was revealed to take away sin. And in him, sin does not continue to abide. No one who abides in him continues to sin or is defined by sinning. And no one who continues to sin or is defined by sin has seen him or known him. Maybe it's just as confusing as the first way. But the reality is, is if we abide in Jesus, we are no longer seen as sinners in God's eyes. In Christ, Paul tells us that we are becoming a new creation. And when we abide in Christ, we have a new identity. We are no longer identified by our sin. We are no longer trapped by those sinful acts and thoughts. And at the same time, John is encouraging us to work to rid ourselves of the sin that still remains. 
and that in the power of the grace that comes from Christ, we can overcome thoughts and deeds and choose different paths and a different identity. God is not done with you or me yet. That might be one of those cliches that we hear from time to time, but God is not done with you or me. But it is also a truth that we can embrace, even as we seek to purify ourselves as he is pure. We are in a process. You all know about processes. You have to go through the stages to get to where you are going. And it's a shared process that we are on. We need one another to hold us accountable in this process. We need the community to walk with us on this journey of purification. Not for the purposes of judgment or condemnation, but for the purpose of encouragement and building up. And that is why we are brought together into the body of believers so that together we can become more like Jesus Christ. You know, John Wesley had this thing called grace that he talked about a lot. And we've heard the, the three different kinds of grace that he uh, talked about. The pure, or the, um, the provenient grace, the grace that comes before, the grace that before we even know that God is pursuing us, that grace follows us. And then when we discover that there is Jesus or God following us, there is the justifying grace. The grace that Christ says, you are worthy. That you are my children. You are justified in our sight. And then today we get to that part that talks about the sanctifying grace. That's the the third part of the process. That's the part where we continue to find our way and move forward in our faith. To find a way to move even in those difficult times and to go to what John Wesley talked about, which is the going on toward perfection. You know, perfection is one of those things that we would all like to do, right? Some of us are better at it than others. But no one has ever gotten there except Jesus. But Wesley believed that we need to continue to move in that direction. Not get stumbled along the way and lose our way, but to continue to move toward that perfection to be like Jesus. Another observation about this text is that we are awash in pronouns. You see, John in his scriptures like to put a lot of pronouns out there. The problem is it's hard to tell who he's talking about. Have you ever listened to somebody talk and all they use are pronouns? <clears throat> and you're going, huh? Uh, I don't get it. But John liked to do that and Maybe that John did that on purpose, but we need to understand what it was that he was talking about. Because sometimes he could have been talking about God. Sometimes he could have been talking about Jesus. Sometimes he could have been talking about both of them, but it was still a he or a thou or a thine. And yet how are we to know what he was really talking about? Jesus was talking about God the Father. He always talked about his Father. He always talked about going to him in prayer, to being abiding with him. And we too are to abide in God. You know, maybe John purposely put those pronouns in there 
because we are called to be like him. We see Jesus Christ as the one who can best relate and reveal God to us and how God would choose for us to live in the community, in the world that we are in. John had a purpose to share with us, to move on, to become pure in our faith and in our life. When Jesus says that I am making all things new, which is a new creation, <clears throat> it's hard to believe he's talking about us. This is what we should be aiming for, however, and as we purify ourselves in our hope that we could one day strive to be as close as we can to Jesus. Because we are given a new identity, a new hope in the community with others in relationships, the hope of a new call to discipleship, and all with the power of the Spirit to guide us as we continue our journey towards perfection. We are to move to make ourselves pure. In God's eyes, in Jesus' eyes, and to encourage those around us to go on that journey with us as we move towards perfection. Amen. This morning, as we move into our time of uh, <clears throat> prayer, <clears throat> excuse me, let us take a moment of silence as we lift up all those prayers of our, um, our prayer concerns and our joys for others in our moments of silence this morning. Lord of dawn and darkness, how grateful we are for your loving mercies. You saw our fear and our doubt, our suspicion, our mistrust, and you banished them from our lives. You replaced them with hope and peace and love and joy. You called us to be your witnesses to all the world, to make us unafraid of what others might think or say about us. We've been invited out of our darkened hideaways into the light of your world as emissaries of hope and justice, peace and compassion. Be with us as we participate in ministries of healing and hope through this church, in our community, in the region, in our nation, and the world. Give us courage and strength to be your disciples in all the circumstances of our lives. For we ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
may be seated. <clears throat> Will you please join me in your bulletin for the unison prayer of confession? Holy and righteous one, we are stunned by the miracles of new life and forgiveness you offer. When our awe turns to disbelief, renew us with your joy. And when our fear turns to rejection, lead us into your presence. When our stumbling leads to sin, forgive us by your grace and direct your steps in your paths of righteousness. In Christ's name we pray, amen. As we have been loved, <clears throat> we are invited to love. As God has given generously to us, we have been invited to give generously to God and to God's church. So may our hearts brim with love and generosity for all as we enter this time of our offering. Will our ushers please come forward this morning for our morning offering. Loving Creator, we come together to present our tithes and our offerings. We are reminded of the profound love with which you have called us your children. Help us recognize that our generosity and stewardship of the resources you've entrusted to us are a sign of our commitment to this holy transformation. May these offerings we bring today be a reflection of our love for you and our desire to be faithful stewards of your blessings. Bless our giving and guide, guide us in our using these gifts wisely and witnesses of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> you may be seated. What does it take to be a witness of Jesus? Um, as far as I can see, um, it means that you're willing to stand up and speak about your faith. And you're willing to live a life of compassion uh, for others in honor of Jesus. Yeah, but what does that mean exactly? Well, for one thing, you're not afraid that you're to, uh, not afraid to admit that you're a follower of Jesus. Even if people think that you're crazy, it doesn't mean that you have to be obnoxious about it. Just be honored to follow the one who brings eternal life. I don't think I'd be able to do that, though. I'm not a good public speaker like Pastor Brad, Nancy, or Lila. I don't have a clue what to say or do. It's not that I don't want to be a witness. I just don't think that I'm good enough to do that kind of work. That's just the point. Jesus didn't have an application he had to fill out. He just said, come, listen, 
learn, care, share, and speak from the heart. Look at who he chose to have around him. A bunch of fishermen, tax collectors, people with questionable backgrounds, as well as some regular folk. He placed love in their hearts and courage in their souls. He'll do the same for you. Do you really think so? Sure. That's what he promised. And he's never broken down, broken, backed away from his promises. I'll give it a try. You can do it. Just be yourself. After all, that's who Jesus loves and depends on. God fills our hearts with joy and covers our lives with grace. Rest in this truth and be at peace. All is well and all will be well. Love will come to perfection in us when we can face the day of judgment without fear. Because our relation to this world is just like Christ. There is no fear in love, for perfect love drives out fear. Mountains and valleys, flora and fauna, receive your love and echo with praise. Our salvation is bound together with all of creation. Amen. Amen. 